guys, now it's time with rains and rainbows. Have you ever thought why a rainbow appears in the sky? Today we will disclose for you this mystery. To explain the nature of rainbow, let's first think about cause producing it. You probably noticed that rainbow occurs during or after the rain, but the only presence of rain is not enough to see it. We need sunlight to observe it. For example, when you have cloudy weather without any ray of sun, even after the rain, you can't see a rainbow. But if a few rays of sun appear in the sky, they will make it possible. Okay, now let's explain why it happens. A rain is millions of small separate drops which fall from the sky. Each drop has a spherical shape, which however may be distorted during its fall. But for simplicity, let's consider them to be spherical. Now the optics appear in the game. Consider a light ray which comes from air and falls on the water drop surface. Water has greater index of refraction than air, so when air crosses air water boundary, it refracts and decomposes into constituents because of dispersion phenomenon. Therefore, inside a raindrop occurs a small rainbow. Inside a water drop, every wavelength moves separately and separately undergo total internal reflection at this boundary of the drop. Then, at the other boundary, all the constituents will be refracted again, go out from the drop, separated even farther apart one from another. Therefore, at the exit we will see a full visible spectrum. If you calculate all the angles, it turns out that red light goes out from the drop under angle of 42 degrees to the incoming light, and violet under 40. But as our drop is spherical, not flat as is shown on this picture, refracted rays will be located on the surface of a cone, and the cross-section looks like a circle. It's a key why we see a rainbow as a bow. We can see a rainbow only if scattered rays get to our eyes. Only drops which fly on the circle satisfy this requirement. But we usually see a rainbow only at half of a circle you can object. Yes, it's true, it's only because sun of a lightener is always behind us and we can't find appropriate raindrops lower than the ground. If, for instance, you fly in a plane and look down onto raindrops, you will be able to see the full round rainbow. Basically, the same situation occurs when you look from the ground to the sun. Notice that every person sees his own rainbow, because formation strictly depends on an angle. Imagine two different observers. They can see a rainbow only if scattered light reaches them. But light which reaches the first observer doesn't reach the second. So the second person will see a light scattered from other range of drops, the third from another, and so on. So basically they see different rainbows. Moreover, a picture of rainbow changes every second, because raindrops fall very quickly. But this process goes very rapidly, and our eyes are not able to respond to these changes. And we can see a rainbow as a whole very clearly. In addition, very often you can see a secondary rainbow. The formation of it is very similar to the primary one. A primary bow is created when light inside a raindrop was reflected only once. But the secondary rainbow is created when light inside a raindrop was created twice. Of course, the intensity of the secondary rainbow is much smaller than the primary one, because of losses upon internal reflection. Once, initial beam loses intensity when it scatters for the first time, and secondly for the second. Therefore, it's quite hard to observe it, but in principle we can see the third and fourth rainbow and so on. It's interesting that colors in the secondary bow are reversed. Moreover, it's twice wider than the first one. Raindrops which create the secondary bow are situated higher than in the first case. Only in this case, secondary reflected rays can reach our eyes. The calculation shows that secondary reflected rays impingle at angles 50-52 degrees to the incident ray. One more interesting feature is that we see the sky between primary and secondary rainbow to be dark, but inside a primary and outside the secondary it's on the contrary it seems to be lighter. This phenomenon is called Alexander's dark band. To understand it, let's again consider a light pass inside a raindrop. Here we can see a raindrop and light which falls onto it. 
Incident rays, after being reflected inside a raindrop, will be distributed in a cone between extreme rays angled under 42 degrees to the incoming light. These extreme rays have the biggest intensity. Therefore, our observer will see the brightest picture from the drops which, which lie in angles 42 degrees to the incident light. Exactly this brightest ball we associate with a rainbow. Light also enters to the angles smaller than 42 degrees. Therefore, our observer will see this part of sky being illuminated, but less intensively. At the angles greater than 42 degrees, we don't have any outcoming light, so this part of sky seems to be darker. For formation of a secondary rainbow, incident rays fall on a raindrop and reflect it there twice. You see that in this case, rays are dispersed in much wider range of angles. This extreme rays goes under angle of 51 degrees to the incident light, and these rays are the most intensive ones. Exactly these rays will form a secondary rainbow. It's important that in the range from 42 degree to the 51 degree, rays won't be dispersed at all. It means that in case of secondary rainbow, this part won't be enlightened, so this middle part will be the darkest in the sky. But in angles greater than 51 degree, rays can be dispersed. It means that the outer part of the secondary rainbow will be lightened. But what about formation of a rainbow at night? Well, actually, it doesn't matter night or day is it. The only important point is the presence of light to create dispersion. Moonlight, which is actually reflected sunlight, could be dispersed on the raindrops in a usual way and create a beautiful rainbow. It's all for now. Subscribe to our channel and study well. Bye-bye!